good morning from a slightly windy viewpoint over pyramid and column so that's the pyramid on the left and the column on the right and you can see up here the crescent moon is still rising in the sky you can see the uh, the lit side from the Sun that actually points directly to where the Sun is going to rise so just above the pyramid there it's a great uh, great start to the day very low inversion which is actually why I've ended up here and not up on the hill over there where I was yesterday evening because to separate pyramid and column here you need quite a high inversion level so this is a much better location to be um, especially to get a shot into the Sun which I will subsequently be doing but I've just been shooting an exposure bracket in the darkness um, to capture this scene in a portrait orientation shooting portrait mostly to make the moon as big a feature in the scene as possible because one thing I will never do is composite a larger moon into a scene it's never too early for a rant it seems uh, yeah I don't don't like that sort of stuff so uh, we've also got some nice clouds rolling in over the cathedral ridge over here so maybe there's gonna be an opportunity for a long exposure there I don't know um, but yes, the, the sun will rise in that direction, then I will probably shoot a, a classic, classic view, a landscape frame um, towards Clef Peak there on the right, and this uh, castle in the distance, that Champagne Castle. So that should make a really nice wide view. Now shooting an exposure bracketed panorama of the scene that you see here. This layering has just got better and better and better. And obviously pyramid and column are such a strong focal point. Now I need to do an exposure bracket. If I darken the sky here, you can see the kind of color we have. So I'm doing a three stop exposure bracket. Here is my camera. And as I oh, reach for the camera, that's difficult. Um, as I half press, you can see the darker exposure, so I'd actually um, check that by pressing the info button here uh, to bring up my histogram. There she is. Half press the button, you can see it's not touching on that right hand side, so that's correctly exposed. I take a shot. And then that's uh, taken all three, one and a half stops. Uh, apart each of them so a total three stop range now I use a three stop range mostly because in my experience if you bracket more than three stops it's hard to actually make use of that tonal range anyway um, but two stops would probably be fine as well anything more than that's getting a bit silly I've settled on the composition I'm going to focus on at sunrise and it's this one here. Uh, I'll talk you through it in a second but I'll just show you what a polarizer is doing here. So that's unpolarized and that's with polarization so it really helps to bring out the contrast in the background here. Uh, compositionally I'm looking for these grasses, they're very beautiful spiny grasses. Um, to, to give me some depth, a sense of depth. Uh, but one thing I was keen to find was a diagonal line of, of grasses to echo what's going on in the background. So I didn't, in this case, just want a, a flat surface of grasses like there, for example. Um, and there's lots of areas where the grasses might be slightly better, but the dynamism I think you get from this line is worth uh, worth that compromise. Uh, in terms of compromises there is one aspect of this shot that I don't like and that's the hill creeping in there on the left. Uh, that to me is a little bit 
uh, distracting because it has a different colour and tone to the rest of the backdrop. But often landscape photography is about compromise and that is a compromise that I'm willing to, to make in this case because I'm quite fond of the shot otherwise. The sun is coming up over there which as you might guess is uh, is 90 degrees to uh, the direction that I'm pointing. That's why the polarizer is so effective. Uh, so if you want to use polarizers in the mountains or anywhere really uh, to, to improve contrast by reducing haze and darkening a blue sky, then you really need to be 90 degrees to the sun. And these layers continue to improve over here. So maybe I'll try shooting something else there. I mean, obviously the color is gone, but with the better definition, I don't know if that'll make a stronger shot or not. But maybe I will leave the classic pyramid and column scene without a sunrise, because I've done a few shots into sunrise on this trip, and I'm more excited now about seeing what happens with the light as it spills down Cathedral Ridge here. Here comes the sun. It's just passing through a thin band of cirrus first and then it's going to start lighting the ridge over here. So I'm set up and ready to go. I'm going to have to shoot a focus bracket to get everything sharp. And that's sunrise over for me, I think. The, uh, the light does get harsh here quickly and the haze that we have does restrict shooting to a certain degree, but I'm quite happy with the shot I did get at sunrise. Um, I may try shooting some abstract shots down into the valleys here. That, again, that's 90 degrees to the sun, so I'm thinking that in this area in particular, I'll be able to boost the contrast using a polarizer. Uh, so there's some potential there. But, uh, but broadly speaking, I think show's over and another great morning. It's coffee time. Coffee time. Interesting. It's very interesting, isn't it? Yeah. Today is our final day on top of the Drakensberg escarpment and also our shortest. But fittingly today we're going up to the highest point of the trip. Cleft Peak, which I think is 3,200 meters, something like that. So it's a mostly gradual ascent uh, and it gets steeper as we approach the summit. Uh, but from the top of there, you have pretty majestic views in both directions along the escarpment. And there's an inversion currently, so we're hoping we can get up there and see the clouds beneath us once more. That's why they call it Cleft Peak. So here we are on top of Cleft Peak, the highest point of our route on our final full day on top of the Drakensberg. And what a view this is. It's uh, pretty unbelievable being up here, particularly with an inversion like we have now. I will have to show you around properly. So let's start over here, looking into the hills of Lesotho. What a radically different country it is to South Africa. 
and these cliffs. And just below me here is the cleft of Cleft Peak, a pretty impressive feature in itself as you saw a second ago. And over there that's Champagne Castle and the Sturkhorn. And then endless inversion. And somewhere in the clouds down there is Cathedral Peak Hotel where we will finish our hike tomorrow. But this is the really exciting portion of the view just here, looking over pyramid and column towards the Cathedral Ridge. So that's the, uh, the pyramid there and the column. And up here we have Cathedral Peak, uh, the horn. Uh, in fact, you can see the bell just there. There's inner and outer horn and the mitre and the chessmen in the middle there. Uh, and then that's elephants and cockade area in the middle of screen there. And then looking into the distance, you can actually see where we started our hike just about. So the outermost promontory there, that's the eastern buttress. Well, we started our hike behind the eastern buttress. That's where the amphitheater is. And you can see this cloud on the left is drifting into the Inwani cutback, which we walked around. So this is an awesome, awesome spot to see just what we've achieved on our hike. It's more and more cloud now obscuring our view as that inversion gets higher and higher, which does create some different views like this one across to the main edge of the escarpment, which usually wouldn't look that good because the uh, cliffs don't give you the same separation that the clouds do. But nevertheless, I think this show is more or less over because we are losing most of the landscape to cloud. Um, but that's no, no bad thing. It might make it a bit cooler for hiking for the rest of the day if it does get high enough. Uh, and also it gives us the chance of something magical happening this evening, much like it did yesterday. So uh, I, think, uh, I think it's time to head back and have a bit of lunch. I've got to be honest, I was really hoping that it would stay cloudy this evening. I'm pretty spun out. Uh, we have been backpacking now for, well, this is this is the seventh day. Um, but the weather had other ideas. So uh, this, is, uh, this is organ pipes. Um, it's actually the head of the pass that we'll be descending tomorrow. Uh, and that, that cloud has just lowered to give us a view into the pass. I may just enjoy this one for myself, although if something uh, really lovely starts to happen, then I will uh, I'll get the camera out, of course. Well, of course, I spoke too soon because no sooner had I almost ruled out shooting uh, sunset than the sun popped out. So I did get the light when it was a little bit better than this as well. 
um, and I'm using these grasses as a foreground element. Obviously in the Drakensberg we don't have uh, flowers everywhere and so on and often these grasses are that uh, sense of depth that you need uh, and that fog has rolled back as well. Uh, so I'm probably going to take one more frame here because that soft light on the uh, on the organ pipes is really quite beautiful. So the mist has rolled in, which is awesome because uh, I'm tired and hungry. <laughs> that that was the best Alex could come up with, apparently. I'm sorry, man. <laughs> Wasn't my idea. Uh, yeah, so we can have an early dinner, which is uh, fantastic because I'm hungry and I'm tired today. We spent a bit too long in the sunshine, I think. Uh, and tomorrow we're going to have the energy, hopefully, to do a final uh, climb up Castle Buttress. <laughs> These guys have imaginatively uh, changed the lyrics to Proud Mary to... It's copyrighted lyrics. <laughs> what are the lyrics? Roman, Roman, Roman in the wilderness. So I thought that serenade from the group would be a fitting way to uh, end that uh, that video on our penultimate day up in the Drakensberg and obviously another really fantastic day and uh, I thought I'd uh, zip through the images as I have done in the previous videos and of course I'm recording this a long time after I recorded the last in fact um, I think we're about 15 months off after this trip so my apologies for not uh, not completing these sooner um, but I will try and get the last one done uh, in, in the coming weeks. Uh, but, but starting with this shot, which of course was the last one that I took at Organ Pipes, I'm pretty happy with this, um, largely because it's an unusual um, uh, colour palette and uh, composition for me in the Drakensberg. It's actually a difficult area to photograph organ pipes and uh, I've, I've struggled here before, so I was quite pleased with this shot. Um, you may have noticed in the video that there's some really nice rock structures out of frame here, um, these towers, and uh, I, I just couldn't find a composition that worked, including those, and now I slightly regret it, having uh, looked back at the, the video, because there was clearly some, some great potential there. Um, but uh, nevertheless, I think this um, vertical frame works fairly well. If I was being critical of, of what I have here, um, I mean, compositionally, it works works moderately well with this very strong central focal point, and then a nice sense of depth and repetition and and, and light um, tying in with the cliff there, uh, coming from the right. So it's nice and coherent, and then enveloped by this fog, which obviously generates a sense of drama. And this uh, rock stack down here adds a secondary focal point um, with the the foreground providing some depth but I do have a bit of an issue with this rock. It's just a little bit too prominent for me with the, the lichen growing on it like it is. Um, maybe I could work with that tonally to make it less of a distraction, but uh, that's maybe the only real quarrel I have, have with this shot. Um, would just be nice if that, that foreground was perhaps a little less busy. Uh, on to something much simpler. So this was the back to the start of the day now, and uh, this was just exquisitely beautiful, um, seeing the crescent moon like this. Um, I've, I've kept the uh, the moon in its uh, true scale there um, and of course uh, in a print this would appear as a tiny but hopefully perfect detail um, in, in what's a very very quiet image here. Um, these twilights in the Drakensberg can be very very beautiful. Uh, so simple central composition, uh, simple silhouette and uh, making the most of, of negative space to uh, highlight that, that tiny detail there of the moon. And then as uh, the sunrise approached, I took this final image of uh, pyramid and column showing the uh, the, the layers um, really well defined here. I love um, this sense of depth that you can get from atmospheric haze in, in the perfect conditions. And of course, you can still see some reasonable structure coming through all this haze as well, which is nice. Uh, certainly later on in the morning, whilst the layers did improve in definition, you did start to lose some of those details. And I rather like the, the blue color here. Um, I did struggle with the crop because actually this works quite well without the sky at all. 
Um, it perhaps becomes a little bit boring, but uh, but a crop like that um, do does work uh, pretty well and um, creates a sense of mystery uh, because if you can't see uh, what's going on outside of the frame, then it, it maybe creates an idea of a landscape that isn't uh, isn't quite there. Um, but uh, but with the color contrast, it's nice. It's just a shame that uh, those highlights where the sun's about to rise exist where they do, because that's a slightly awkward position. I mean, maybe if they were more central, it would be okay. But um, yeah, I, I guess that's a minor point. Um, and so a nice simple image. This this was my uh, one of my absolute favorites from the entire trip. In fact, this really achieves everything that I would hope for in, in a landscape photograph. Um, really beautiful lighting, a fantastic location with plenty of interest. And you can even, there's even a nice detail here of the, uh, the Eastern buttress where we started over there in the distance uh, and the devil's tooth. Um, but but this uh, this foreground here is is particularly nice. These sunlit grasses, really nicely um, arranged naturally. I'm not uh, not celebrating my composition too greatly here, um, but I, I certainly think it ties together well. And um, th the sense of dynamism you get from these lines really is is great. Um, so to me, this this ties together very beautifully and. Um, it can be difficult to achieve that in the Drakensberg, and it's something that I, I regularly struggle with. Um, the foregrounds can feel very detached from the background uh, behind. And as I mentioned in the video, I do have this minor annoyance, which is this rock creeping in on the left. But actually, it bothers me a lot less now than it did at the time. And uh, yeah, very, very pleased with that shot. Uh, now on to a view from the top of Clef Peak. Um, obviously, a, another spectacular scene here. Um, it is unfortunately a little bit too busy for me. Um, it's a little bit of a hasty edit actually. Um, so there's a few things that I could clear up here. I can start to see a bit of a halo emerging around the edge here, um, which would be easy enough to fix. But uh, yeah, it's just very, very busy and, and spectacular. Of course, it was a spectacular scene, but um, I think I would look for something just a, a little bit more peaceful um, from this scene. And in fact, I, I have a, a shot taken on a different trip a few years previous. Um, that perhaps does these kind of conditions from this viewpoint uh, a, a little bit uh, more justice. Um, and I think it's good to compare this one uh, to the, this second image, which does have that simplicity. So we have more, uh, well, kind of negative space. There's certainly plenty of interest in this cloud, but, but more space anyway. And um, to me, a little bit more structure too. Um, so I, I'm really pleased with this one because it, it's allowed me to, to photograph an area. This is uh, elephant and cockade area here that I've never really got a shot of before that I was happy with. Um, so that uh, rising inversion was uh, particularly fortuitous in, in this uh, particular case. And then finally, this one looking through to uh, one of the valleys that leads into the Cathedral Peak Hotel area. Um, so it's kind of looking down into the valleys that we would be walking down into the following day. In fact, I suspect that trail there is the one that we followed. Um, I did cut through quite a lot of haze here with my edit, and you can see that haze in the video. But um, I, I really like this sort of cloud breaking up to reveal the valley below. <laughs> Um, concept in this image. Again, pretty simple, but um, I don't have anything quite like it. And uh, yeah, I really enjoy it. Um, nice, nice, simple image. Um, nothing to, to write home about creatively. I'm not, uh, I'm not saying I've reinvented the wheel here, but uh, a nice one um, to finish this video on, I think. And uh, as I mentioned, I'm hoping to put out the, the final video, which perhaps has the most spectacular image from the entire trip um, out in the, in the next couple of weeks. Uh, so do keep an eye open for that one.